My name is Brian, and I'm the String Orchestra teacher at Garfield High School. If you've been following along with these videos, you're probably expecting to see Miss Stephanie here today. Well, I'm standing in for her so she can take a well-deserved break. Miss Stephanie and I are colleagues and friends. We both teach music in different buildings, and sometimes we play in the same orchestra with each other. With Miss Stephanie on the violin, which you can see over here, and I play the double bass, which is like a cello, but even larger. Some of you may have the chance to switch to the double bass later on in your musical careers. Um, but what I've got with me today is a cello so that we can work on the instrument that you know best. We're here in my living room where I've been spending an awful lot of time lately. I enjoy reading and practicing and watering my plants. And you might even get a chance to see my dog Pepper who likes to sleep on this couch back here after playing. We've been playing a lot lately, so she's pretty tired right now. Hopefully she'll pay us a visit, though. Today, we're going to look at a new technique for how to use our bow. Okay, take your bow out of your case and do as I do. The first thing to make sure we do is to tighten up our bow. Every time we put our bow away, we must loosen it. And then before we play, we have to tighten it back up. This is because these horsehairs can get stretched out over time. And if we don't store them loose, they break and uh, fall off much earlier than they should. But we need them to have a little bit of tension in them to play. I always think of the bow as needing a gentle smile. When you tighten it the right amount, the hairs won't go up against the stick if you just set it down on a string or on your finger, but there's still a little curve to it, sort of like a small smile. You know you've tightened your bow too much if it's just in a straight line. It kind of looks like a frown or something angry. So make sure you have a gentle curve to your bow, but enough tension to get a good sound out of the string. And then we're going to review our bow hold. I always teach bow holds this way by holding the bow up in front of my face with my left hand and taking my bow hand in the air and making it into a little bunny rabbit. The secret to a good bow hold is flexibility. And if we make some bunny rabbits, we have a chance to flex all of the joints and muscles that make up our hand. I take my thumb and keep it nice and curved. And I take the bunny's two teeth and I put them right in front of that thumb. And then I wiggle those teeth back and forth like I'm nibbling on a piece of grass. And I take my bunny's ears and I wiggle them in the air like they're flopping in a heavy breeze. All of the joints in my finger now are super relaxed and I'm ready to add the bow, which I hold in front of my face. Take your thumb, set it on the bottom of the stick and slide it until it just touches the frog. Put those two teeth right in front of the thumb nibble a little bit of grass, and then we're going to turn into what we call a floppy-eared bunny. If you're familiar with your species of bunny, the ones with long ears that flop over the top of the stick. And we don't want them to be a, full of tension. You know, a floppy-eared bunny, those ears are floppy. So just let those fingers drape over the top of the stick. Voila, you got a beautiful bow hold. Real quick, we're going to do that one more time. Hold the stick with your left hand and take your bow hand, your right hand, set the thumb on the bottom of the stick and slide it till it touches the frog. The bunny's teeth go in front of the thumb, wiggle the bunny's ears to be nice and relaxed, and then flop them over the top of the stick. I find that my pinky lands right where there's a spot on the frog of my bow. Your bow might not have a spot there, but if it does, you'll find that your pinky lands right about where that spot is. Take your good bow hold, and we're gonna learn a new song. Once you've got your good bow hold, this song will allow all of the joints in your wrist to become loose and flexible. I'll sing you the whole thing and then we can review it. My song goes, up like a rocket, down like the rain. Back and forth like a choo-choo train. Round and round my face like the sun. 
Look, pat your pinky, bend your thumb. All right, so let's break this song down one line at a time. We need to keep the bow straight up and down at all times. That's what allows all of our muscles to be flexible. So imagine your bow is perfectly perpendicular with the ground and keep it there no matter where your hand goes. First part of the song is up like a rocket, down like the rain. Repeat it with me. Up like a rocket, down like the rain. And then we go back and forth like a choo-choo train. Once more. Up like a rocket, down like the rain. Back and forth like a choo-choo train. That's half the song. The next one's about circles. So we're going to talk about a big circle in the sky. Round and round my face like the sun. And finally, we do a check to make sure our pinky's in the right spot and that our thumb is bent. Look, pat your pinky, bend your thumb. All right, I've got my cello out. I've adjusted the end pin so it hits me right. I don't know if you can see, but I've got a good cello chair. I'm not using my couch because it's way too low to the ground and it makes my knees stick up in a funny way. I need a good height on my chair. And now I'm ready to play the D major scale. Why don't we do this together? We're gonna play each note in the scale two times, starting on our open D string with our beautiful bow holds. One, two, D major, here we go. And let's go down the scale as well. Now what we just did was to play the scale using normal notes. Notes that are kind of like words when you're talking to a friend. And musicians have a special term for that. We call normal notes detaché. Detaché are those notes that just have a little bit of space between them and have kind of rounded edges. Nice, graceful, gentle, normal notes. Most of what we play is détaché, or kind of normal playing. But I'm going to teach you two other types of notes. Really short ones, and really connected ones. First, let's learn about short notes. We call these staccato. Staccato sounds like what it means, very articulate notes. And I like to call them, instead of normal notes, I like to call them sticky notes or sticky bows because the bow stays stuck to the string at the beginning and end of the note, like this. You can almost feel an edge to the beginning of the note and an edge to the end of the note because of how sticky the bow is. And there's a lot of space between the notes. If I was talking in staccato, I would sound like this. Hello, how are you? It would be kind of jerky and abrupt. Let's try staccatos on the D major scale. Start just like you did before by sticking your bow to the string and keep it stuck at the end of each note. Two of each. One, two, here we go. Sometimes it's really easy to make an extra sound because of how sticky the bow is, like a so it takes a little bit of practice to get it to sound right. 
Now we're going to learn about the opposite of staccato, notes that are very connected and smooth. And as a string player, we have a special way of making things so connected, there's no space at all between the notes. We can play notes that are slurred. That is, notes where we play more than one note on the same bow. A slur is any time there's more than one note in a single bow. Watch while I play the D major scale using two note slurs. You'll notice that I use half the bow on the first note and the other half of the bow on the second note. Then I change bow directions and I use half the bow and half the bow again so that there's an even sound across my slur. And because I'm never stopping the bow, those notes, they just blur right into each other. There's no space at all between them. Let's try two note slurs together on the D major scale. One, two, two note slurs, go. Nicely done. I want to show you one other thing that we can try together. That's four note slurs. For four note slurs, I have to make sure I only use a quarter of the bow on each note, or I'm going to run out of bow, or the last note's going to sound all kind of squeaky because I tried to fit it in at the very last moment. So be very careful with your four note slurs to only use one quarter of the bow on each note. It'll look like this. Let's try it together. Set your bow on the string, keep it nice and straight. Four note slurs, here we go. And now let's put all of that together. Do you remember the three types of bowing we just talked about? There's détaché, or normal notes, that just have a rounded start and a little bit of space between them. There's staccato notes, or sticky bows, which have edges to them and a lot of space between them. And then there are slurs. I've drawn a picture of two note slurs where there's no space between both of those two notes because they're on the same bow. And then there's just a little space between each different bow, kind of like a detache stroke. Good luck, have fun, and I hope to see you all again.